industry. We are broadcasting live tonight from Washington, D.C. I'm your host, Cassandra Archer, a.k.a. the Divine Diva of Comedy. Thank you for tuning in tonight. We have a great show. You better tune in to this best on radio. See, this is a wonderful thing, man. When I open these two eyes, the world has not been kind to me. It's not pleasing to me. The world no longer appeals to me. Tune in every Tuesday right here at Vessel Radio. 7 o'clock. Don't be late, you know. The majority of the males in my family are in jail to this day. Wow. And it's Brother Shazan and Preston. My God. Man, you can't tell me that you're not good people. It says, hello, my name is D. My mother's currently in the hospital at this present time in ICU due to a blood clot in her heart. For five straight weeks, I went to five straight funerals. Um, wow. I just lost a child. I just received news today that I may not be able to carry a pregnancy to full term. Tune into Vessel Radio every Tuesday. Eh? You hear me I'm saying? This is Sister Mary Sanctified. Hallelujah. So glad to be here tonight. Can't I tell you, vessels, you better make sure you tune in every Tuesday. You need this here radio station. Every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., you need to be right here at Vessel Radio. Who is it? Come here. Them kids knocking at their door or something. I don't know. Anyway, I'm telling you, tune in. We on the Instagram it. In the Facebook, but y'all be careful of that Facebook, you hear me? Because it's full of evil. I tell you, it's full of <laughs> evil. I was on this Facebook. Uh, on the Facebook, everybody want to be my friend. I don't even know these people. And this man Sam talking about, hey, lady, I want to be your friend. You know what? I need some companionship. I said, hey, Sam, how you doing? He said, it's Uncle Sam. You owe the IRS, so pay your taxes. You know what? <laughs> Evil is behind this thing. I'm telling you. That's why you got to watch them kids. Make sure you take them grandkids to church. These kids need to go to church. Who is it? Somebody knocking at the door. Take these kids to church because the kids don't understand a thing that's going on. My grandbaby said, Grandma, is Jesus punished? I said, what you talking about? He said, every time we go to his house, you call his name and never come out his room. What is wrong with these children? Something wrong with them. Hallelujah. They need to all on my something. We need to put something on these children. But you got to, you know what? This show is good. It's the vessel. Somebody might be delivered. Hallelujah. Listening to this show. Who is at the door? My gracious. Somebody might get delivered. You know, sister like me, Mary Sanctify, yes, I read my Bible every day. Every day. Hallelujah. But I tell you one thing. <laughs> Lord, I still got some problems. Got some problems. Yeah, sister like me, I like to play the lottery. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Jesus still working on me. Hallelujah. I play the lottery. And somebody told Pastor I was playing the lottery. Mm -hmm. Knowed who it was, Deacon Jones, because you was right in the line behind me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell on somebody. Tell on yourself. But I was upset because Pastor told me up in his office. Mm -hmm. Said, Sister Mary, you playing the lottery? I said, yes, Pastor. I ain't going to lie. He said, why is it that you playing the lottery and you playing the church address? I said, Deacon, I said, Pastor, look here. I know who told you Deacon and told on me, but I got to play the church address. He said, that's not right. Why are you playing the church address? I said, look here, Pastor. I'm playing the church address because your tag number that came out twice. I can't play that no more. That ain't going to happen. Anyway, y'all pray for me. I'm going to pray for you. And some of y'all gals come up in this church. We want you to praise the Lord. But you go to Macy's or somewhere. Go to some of these upscale department stores, something like Target or Walmart, somewhere. Find you some good undergarments. We try to start tired of seeing your ganip ganaps hanging all around. Go get you one of these good-looking things. One of these things, something like this. Y'all don't know nothing about this. Some good underoos. I'm out of here. I'm tired. You better tune in next to me. If I don't see you, well, I talk to you when I see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Sister Mary Sanctified. Uh, glad to have you with us this lovely, cold Tuesday evening. Uh, once again, welcome everybody to the Vessel Ministry Over Industry. My name is Shazan. Glad to be back with you. Sorry that we missed you last week. You know, couldn't help the weather conditions. I know it's a lot of snow and ice outside, but thank God for his traveling mercies to allow us to be here on this lovely Tuesday. For those of you tuning in for the very first time, Please be sure to hit us up at email, vesselradio at gmail.com. You can also give us a call to 276-D1-VESSEL. That is 276-318-3773. And, of course, we definitely want you all to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Vessel Radio. Each and every Tuesday, we always start our show off with our scripture for today. So without any further delay, I'm going to go ahead and read to you today's scripture. Today's scripture comes from Romans chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. And it reads, because they do this, God has given them over to shameful passions. Even the women pervert the natural use of their sex by unnatural acts. In the same way, the men give up natural sexual relations with women and burn with passion for each other. Men do shameful things with each other and as a result, they bring upon themselves the punishment they deserve for their wrongdoing. That was read to you from the book of Romans chapter one, verses 26 and 27 found in the Good News Bible. And I believe that that is going to be the perfect segue to get into our discussion for tonight. And tonight's question is, is homosexuality genetic or spiritual, and can you be or someone be delivered by God? Without any further delay, I would like to introduce to you our host for the evening, Miss Cassandra Archer, a.k.a. the Divine Diva of Comedy. Hey, hey, hello, hello, and welcome. How are you guys doing out there tonight? I have the wonderful pleasure of having an exciting person with me tonight. All right. This, uh, yes, you are full of fun and excitement. Turn and you, up. And yes, <laughs> try to turn up. Exactly. Amen. Let me tell That's you. Good. You may not know his face, but I want to tell you all about this wonderful, wonderful person. This young man. Is from Washington, D.C. Been singing since he was three years old. I mean, right out of the womb. His grandparents, Bishop Samuel and Lady Juanita Bird, from the Silver Church in Temple, excuse me, Silver Temple Church in Washington, D.C. He had his first solo directed by his mother and his father, Dermita Renee Bird and Edward Dyson Sr., born to minister Bird's gift for singing was developed in an early, excuse me, developed early from leading the church choir. So he started right out doing what he was supposed to do. Edward Bird is here tonight. Music comes from a place of pain, dysfunction, and betrayal that was charged by his relationship. But now it has been totally changed with the salvation from Christ. Edward Bird, the love bird, is on a mission to affect the world and change the hearts of humans to face the truth and choose love, life, and freedom. Vessels, give it up for Edward Bird. Woo I know that's right. I know that's right. Come on over here. Come on closer to me. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. You are jazzed. Oh, I like this. I Thank like you. this. I appreciate it. I do a little something in the name of Jesus. Say that. Wow. Oh, yeah. In the name of Jesus. So starting to sing at three years old yes. and directing the church choir. Did yeah. I mean, were you forced to do that really? No, my mom was actually, she was the church choir director. Okay. And so she... She, she, you know, I just came out. My dad was the minister of music, playing the piano. Wow. So I just naturally had the gift. And so she put me out there and said, you're going to sing this song. And I said, okay, amen. Wow. Now, when did you fall in love with music itself? I mean, I know you started singing it there, but kids are, you yeah, know. But I always sung. My mom said, this is embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I, she said mom when she took it. me to the grocery store, I would make up songs about, like, all the stuff in the aisles and stuff. Like, I'd be in the okay. car singing about macaroni and cheese <laughs> and <laughs> And no, she's no, we gotta hear the macaroni song. <laughs> no, no, I did sing a song if for because we said we actually lived in DC off of Georgia Avenue. Okay. And, um, and so I it's 
But every time I wanted to go to the curry out, I used to sing, I need some wicked wings and some wicked fried rice. <laughs> wicked wings, y'all. Wicked wings. Yeah. I know you can sing loud. You have to speak louder, too. Okay, so we okay. want to hear that yeah. voice. We want to Everybody hear always tells me I talk low, so stuff. I'm going to try to yeah, we speak need to up. Put, that's right, because the right. vessels need to hear Amen. all this. Amen. Amen. Glory. Turn up. Wing. Why was the wings wicked, though? I, I don't know. Forgive us, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That was back before I knew the Lord for real. Okay, Amen. so when you knew the Lord for real, Amen. so you had to rededicate yourself, and when was that? Yes, that was January 8th in 2012. Okay, so that's an anniversary for you, huh? Yes, amen. Amen, yeah. and, where, and how did that come about? What happened? What was going on in your life that you well, had to rededicate? A lot. Mm-hmm. A lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot. So, I mean, like, um, so, I, yeah. I, I, it's a lot, you know, I, I, right before the time when I rededicated my life to Christ, I was going through, it was like God was pursuing me. Okay. So I went through like a whole six months of God pursuing me, trying to get my attention. He would come to me and I'll be out. Like I remember like a new year's before that I was out at the club and I was just like, I keep on hearing the voice of God. And I told my cousin, I was like, I can't even get away from him inside the club. Whoa. I got it. I got it. You know what I'm saying? So that next Sunday after that, I went, you know, and gave my life to Christ. Amen. Wow. Cause it was, he was, but he was pursuing me through a time period right before I turned 25. He was I told my age. Bless y'all. <laughs> That's all right. That's <laughs> so right all right. before I turned twenty five, he um he was pursuing me for like uh six months. Really. Like okay. I can just say like I Chasing saw God for real. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like he was speaking to me and talk. he came to me in dreams. I was one time I couldn't sleep. He was keeping me up all night and then people were just like I went to my, my grand my grandmother on my father's side as a pastor too. And I went to her church and my aunt, she was like, something great is going to happen to you today. And I went into the church service, and it was like the Holy Spirit just took over the whole service. And my okay. grandmother from the pulpit, she said, Ed, God is calling you. Hmm. And okay. she said, he's even telling me to give you this Bible. So let's back up to some of yeah. this dysfunction and stuff that was going on that mm-hmm. um, that actually pulled you. Because I see that in your bio, you've had some wonderful opportunities mm-hmm. um, through well, your music. Yes. How old were you when the uh, opportunities you've been on uh, The Voice and you've um, The X Factor? I yeah. mean, I was... It was in my early 20s, like when I was like 23. All of, I started auditioning for different stuff when I was 16 years old. Okay. So I started going after music and pursuing music really, really early because it was just something I knew I wanted to do. Like, if I knew I wanted to do anything. I knew I was going to go to Hollywood well, and, and sing. you were obviously great because you, you got a contract. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I w- it, it's a gift, you know what I mean? And it, was, it stood out amongst the crowd because I have a really high range, and so people just really... They take they take they're taken back by that you know what I'm saying because it's really different for a guy to get up there and to sing as as high as I can sing and so it makes me stand out. And so what happened with what the contract? Why why didn't you pursue? Well, I actually was in a singing group when I was 20, and I was in a singing group for about three years, and we went through different various members. We had um, some artistical differences okay. and so we went through various members and so we got down to two we changed like members like three times okay. out of like the three years we were together and so me and the last member his name's alvin he's okay. we still friends and okay. um, me and him we actually won a contract at the belvedere mm-hmm. hotel in baltimore maryland wow. and we won a contract with universal records but at that time before christ i was living the life of homosexuality and okay. so the universal right the universal records they they didn't want to take a chance and have two openly gay artists on their record label Do and you so we got that? no no okay. by no means no, no no means by no means and you said before so mm-hmm. now you're delivered amen okay yes <laughs> so doing your time living well, how old were you when you discovered your homosexuality i mean i battled with it from a young age like it started really early I wasn't really aware of it, but it's true what the Bible says, the life and death is in the power of your tongue. Because Mm -hmm. when I was younger, people would always say you're gay or you this or you that because my dad wasn't around. And so I just had my mom. And so I would, I picked, basically picked up her tendencies, you know what I'm saying? Picked up her feminine ways. I was always around my grandmother. So I was more domesticated. I knew how to cook. I knew how to clean. I knew how to take care of the house. You know what I'm saying? I always kept myself together. I didn't like to get dirty, you know what I'm saying? None of that kind of stuff. So people out there in the world as a young child, people, they look in the categorize you as something because they want to understand. You know what I mean? So because that, because you were spoke, because it was spoken around you, do you feel that 
that made you? I'm not going to say it made me, but I feel like it, it planted seeds in me. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? When they spoke those things over my life, they manifested. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it caused me to question my own identity. And then not having my father around and my mom being, you know, in a place where she was, not totally being stable in Christ. You know what I'm saying? It, she wasn't able to give me that support and that foundation so that I would totally know my identity and who I am, not what people have to say. Homosexuality is really hard for a lot of people to accept, understand. Everybody has their own, you know, way of how you become homosexual and, mm-hmm. and so forth. Like you were saying, it was spoken over you, mm-hmm. so you kind of just went into it. Did you ever feel yourself battling, like, oh, I yeah. don't want mm-hmm. to be homosexual. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be yeah. a man. Um, totally. Totally, it was times when it's not something that I, I definitely would have chosen for myself. You know what I'm saying? That's how I knew. That's how now looking back at it, I know that it's something that's trying to, that it's a it's a spirit. You know what I'm saying? That's what I believe. I believe it's a spirit. I believe it's, it's like the Bible says, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. Hmm. We wrestle against principalities and powers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I believe that it's a spirit. It's a, it's a spiritual battle. And I can tell even in my, my own personal being, the fight of pulling me and wanting to do this and wanting to go this and like, but this is not who I am, but not having the strength or the education or the knowledge spiritually to fight because you got to fight. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I wouldn't be at this place of freedom for three years if I didn't fight. Oh. And it was because of the strength that I pulled from going to church and from reading my Bible, from praying, from fasting, from the people around me praying for me. Hmm. That's why I'm God's standing spinning. here today. Because God's that, spinning. you know what I mean? So I do believe it's a spiritual battle. I do believe it's from what people say. I do believe it's from what the world is and what they put hmm. out to people and trying to corrupt our minds and make us feel this way and make us act this way. And that's not what God is. That's not who we are. And that's what I'm here to tell everybody. That's not who we are. Amen. Amen. <laughs> that's so not who thank- God created us to be. Sorry. Don't get me started. No, I preach right. sometimes. It's Amen. Right. Glory to God. Testimony. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. So your music back then Amen. in your homosexual state, mm-hmm. how is it different now? Because you basically did not pers- get as far as you wanted to go mm-hmm. in your career. Because of I b- even believe that that was God, though. I believe that God, he knew, even when, because it was, I I remember it vividly. I would tell y'all, I had my mind made up that I was going to be somebody famous. I had had Hollywood (laughs) posters in my walls. I was worshiping Hollywood, for real, for real. You know what I mean? And it was one night, my best friend was at my house, and I was laying in the bed, and I could not go to sleep. And God woke me up, and he said, take the stuff off your wall. Whoa. And I said, what? Okay, and so I took the stuff off my wall, and I was just like, okay, Lord, what's going on? You know what I'm saying? That he, it was like he was telling me, like, you're worshiping this stuff. Mm, yeah. You're, you, you, yeah, you need to be worshiping me. And I'm just like, oh, my God. So I bagged up everything. I said, so you can have this, and just gave it away. Because <laughs> I was like, okay, I never. When God comes to you for real, you ain't got no choice but to respond. Amen. And Amen. I had to respond. And in that time, I was making choices and slowly making changes. Like, I mean, God was pursuing me so strong. I was in a club one time. And this is, I've been in the club a lot. So I was in a club <laughs> another turn. time. And this one of my friends, and she was a homosexual too. And now she's delivered from homosexuality. And she was in the club. And she said, you know, God has such a light on you. And she was like, I got a Heineken in my hand. I shouldn't even be talking about God. But I just can't get away from him. Hmm. And then that was just... It just slowly started changing. I mean, God just started moving. He just started pulling me and, and, and sending people to me. I mean, he, I had a vision. I, one time I was in my room, and I had a vision of this club that I used to go to. And I saw people, like, in there, and it was like I saw spirits on top of the club. Mm. And it was like they were. It was like when I first realized that they were spirits and they were being held captive. Wow. And it was like God was saying, the only reason you're out of here is because of my grace and my mercy. Mm. Mm-hmm. And so at that moment, I just cried, and I was just like, God, whatever you want. And then a voice out of thin air just came and was just like, follow me. How, how do people respond to you when you say, I was homosexual, but I'm de- I'm delivered now? I mean, especially the closer people. I know that it, you know. You mean my family? Family oh. and closer friends. and. Well, in the process, I've lost a lot of f- friends. Hmm. And even family members, it's hard to understand because I was really tight, niched with my family, really, really close with them. And hmm. I was kind of like the leader you know what I'm saying in a sense like me my cousins we were really really tight you know what I mean so we we did everything together and so when God called me out I had to choose you know what I mean I had to say okay I can't go this place anymore I can't do this anymore so a lot of people turned their back on me I have friends who 
don't even speak to me anymore. You know what I'm saying? I've really lost a lot in choosing this life and choosing to stand up for God and choosing to be the vessel that he's called me to be because people pe- people want to be comfortable in a sense. And so when I'm around, you can't be comfortable because I'm forcing you to make a decision. Mm-hmm. I'm forcing you to make a choice because mm-hmm. I've made a choice. And so if you're not going to go where I'm going, then you can't be on my boat. Mm-hmm. And so people are challenged by that. And so either you get negative backlash or you get people who gonna want to support you. Wow. I got some people who support me and I'm grateful for that, but Amen. the people who matter the most, they're starting to get it, you know what I'm saying, to come around. I thank God for that. Like I pray and I'm so grateful for that, that they're starting to understand, they're starting to get it, but it hurt for a long time, you know what I mean? And so a lot of people, they don't talk to me. I mean, even like one of my one of my friends, he's still in the lifestyle and he one of my first my first single came out on February on Valentine's Day. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. It came out on Valentine's Day. Um, He posted something on Facebook, and he was like, man, I woke up, and this is the best Valentine's Day gift I ever could have got. He was like, my brother, I'm super talented, and he was like, I'm actually in tears like right now listening to him, and I know he's going to do great things, and he's in a lifestyle now, so we're still, we still have relationship, but I, I, I thank God that, I thank God even looking back, I have, God done some work in me, but my heart was always real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I always loved honestly. I've always gave honestly, even when I was out there. So that left an impression on people. Right. And people still love me even though I changed. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? Well, even though really God changed me. Because, yes. Yeah, he did the work. But even though I'm changed in a new transition, people still connected to me and people still right. love me. You know what I'm saying? But just as much awesome. love I get is just as much hate. Because people hate you. Amen. And, yes. And the music, the, and now the the new Edward. Praise <laughs> so, How you doing? Well, you Edward My before, name is Edward Amen. Bird. <laughs> Amen. This is an introduction for people who don't know me. My name is Edward Bird. Amen. How you doing? So this new message, um, mm-hmm. your, your music, what's the name of your new CD? My mix, it's a mixtape. Mixtape. Yes. Amen. Glory. Amen. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's going to be called True Love. True Love. Mm-hmm. Okay. And what message is... This, this music sending or what is this um, mixtape all about? I'm really excited about this project because <laughs> it's been a long time coming. I mean, um, I'm happy to be doing it on the right side of the fence. You know what okay. I mean? That's what's okay. exciting to me. More importantly, that I'm doing it, and I know that it's going to go out into the world and create something positive. Mm. That's going to go out into the world and change things. I'm not just being with everybody else and causing destruction, but I'm actually trying to bring life, trying to bring love, and trying to let people see who God really is. You know what I mean? And that's the reason why I titled it True Love. Me and my brother, his name is Darren Carter. He's like the co-founder. Hey, Darren. He's the co-founder of my ministry. For that, yeah. So, you know, that's my brother and his beautiful wife. Bless them. My name is Carter. Bless them. I got to give him a shout because we're really close. They, like, support me through everything. Oh. He wanted to be here tonight, but he had to work. Bless your brother. Amen. <laughs> but the reason why I called it love, um, the reason why I called it True Love is because I want to show people who God really is, and I believe that God is true love. You know what I mean? Okay. I believe that he is He is love. That's what he says, you know what I'm saying? And I believe that, and I believe that the world needs love. If mm. we had more love, things would be so much better, cohesive. You know what I'm saying? If we really loved the way God said love, it would be nothing wrong. Agape, agape. It would be nothing I, wrong. I, I want to I wanna, I wanna hear this because I'm looking at you. You all jazzed up and Look everything, and I'm like, okay, what Red genre is, my is this color. music coming from? Well, it's gospel, but okay. it's not traditional. It's not re- it's not religious. It's not, okay. you know what I'm saying? It's not. You know, it's gospel, uh-huh. but it's not religious. Yeah, it's so not religious. It's, it's, it's not traditional. The love of God. It's the love of God through song. It's my testimony. It's everything I've been through. It's the life experiences. Because, you know, there are things in life that, I mean, so, sometimes you just got to say what you've been through for people to experience. And sometimes right, you just got to right, say what it is. Right. It can't be the same thing over and over again. Use life experience. We got to be creative. God created the whole world. Mm. And you can't think of something to be creative about? All right. All right. I want to hear something. So what, what <laughs> we going to hear first? What are we going to hear first? Well, first is a song called You and I. You and uh, I. I rewrote this song. It's actually... Um, a re- song. I'll let you just hear it but Let I rewrote this song and it's a song that it's it's a romantic song to God you know okay. what I'm saying you know he is our husband we his bride you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. so it's a romantic song to him it just really really explains my relationship when I met God I was messed up I was drinking like almost every day mm. 
I was turning up for Jesus now. Yeah, amen. You Glory to God. <laughs> <laughs> I was drinking like almost every day, and I was very insecure, and I didn't feel good about me. And then once I found God, I saw how much He loved me, and when He mm-hmm. was pursuing me, and when He was coming after me, I was like, I must be important. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's check this out. I want to listen yeah. to it. You're tuning into Vessel Radio. We're going to hear out. You and I by Edward Bird. Amen. Ooh. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you and I. yeah. And it's you have this, a great voice. Praise God. Yes. Glory to God. Awesome. I'm grateful voice. for that. That's now, awesome. if you could go back and talk to the old Edward, were you Edward Whoa. then, or were you Eddie or Edie or? No, back then I was a whole different person. Okay. My name was Remy. R- Remy, turn yes. up for Remy. It's real. If you could go back and talk to Remy, what would you tell him? Slow down. Slow down. Stop running. Face it. Because Remy knew God, he was just pretty much hiding from him. He knew God, but he didn't know God. Mm-hmm. He knew of God. Okay. He'd been in church. He okay. saw church people. You okay. know what I'm saying? Okay. He knew God is love. And it's sad to say, but the church doesn't exemplify that. And if the church would have exemplified that for me then, I believe I would not have even went down that path. Because as soon as I really found who God was, I totally changed. And so if I would have encountered God how I should have encountered God as a young age and when I was growing up in the church, things would have been totally different. Mm -hmm. But because it was too much of me and my issues and what I want and Mm -hmm. all All about me instead of Jesus (laughs) and reaching to people and loving on people and really teaching and showing and not about board and executive and deacon and and mother and mother and you know what i'm saying but about let's get the kids let's love on them let's teach them let's let's do events for them let's show them the way you know what i'm saying let's be free let's be pioneers i mean we got all the power jesus gave us all the power amen so why are we sitting down like we ain't got no power you know what i'm saying they didn't show us that you know what i'm saying and i feel like if i would encounter god the way that in that way and i would have felt his love i wouldn't have never went on i would have never been down that road but what I would have told myself now, if if I ran into me walking the street, I would have told, I would have stopped myself and gave myself a hug. I would have stopped myself and gave myself a hug and just said, "What is it? What do you need? Walk with me. Talk with me. Let me hear you. Where's your pain coming from? You know what I'm saying? Because that's what it is. I was running from the pain. You know, I'm not having my dad, my mom being, you know, what I'm saying my mom. She had me when she was 15 years old, so she didn't know how to be a mom. You know what I'm saying? And so dealing with that pain and growing up fast and 
having to deal with a, a stepfather and accept him and his daughter yes. and all those emotions and all those wow. things. You know what I'm saying? I was running from that, and then nobody taught me how to understand. You just had to grab hold of yeah. Wendy and say, hey, let's do that. Yeah, I would have grabbed him and said, come <laughs> here. What's going on? You know what I'm saying? You're tuning into Vessel Radio. We have a caller on the line. Hello, caller. You want to say hello to Edward Bird? Who is this? <laughs> Caller, we uh, we have Monet on the line. Monet, can you hey, hear us? Hey, Monet. Yes. All right. What was your question for Edward? Oh, I know Edward personally. Me and Keisha and Tony. We just wanted to say hi and that we love him and that we support him. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was Monet. Family friend. Hi, Monet. <laughs> Oh man! You got some fans out there, huh? I love them too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I do. I love them. Awesome. They support. They support me for real. For Wonderful. real. I sent out a message, and they was the first ones to post up on Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. Yeah, I awesome. love them. So you guys keep on Monet, keep on posting it up for Edward, keep on supporting him. And I go eat dinner at the house. Uh, <laughs> and keep on cooking for him. <laughs> Praise him, Mama Tony. I love you. <laughs> Sister Keisha, eyebrows on fleet. Oh, eyebrows on fleet. <laughs> 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 I was learning that word. <laughs> so awesome. So, uh, so Christ, since He delivered you, since mm-hmm. since you had your deliverance, what has changed? So, what are the new things that Edward is now doing? I'm excited. Okay, <laughs> okay relationship wise, I'm single. Okay, single. But my heart is with somebody. Amen. 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 She knows who she is. She needs to act right in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Wow, oh, I'm I'm pretty direct and honest. <laughs> okay. Up front. Okay. Amen. So, um, still in church? Yes, I, I go to Behind the Bell Kingdom Worship Center under the covering of Pastor Tony Herndon Jr. Amen. Amen. And what are you and doing in lady. church? Are you co- directing the choir again? I am. Uh, I am a worship leader in training. I guess you could say. Worship leader in training. Well, I'm not really a worship leader in training. I lead worship with her. Like she leads worship. She's a part. She's a part of the music, the music team, but. I lead worship on like the fourth Sundays and stuff like that. Okay. And so she leads worship on like second and fourth Sunday, and I leave fourth, first and fourth Sunday. Okay. And say yeah. the name of the church again, nice and loud. And Behind clear. the Veil Kingdom Worship Center. Behind the Veil. Amen. Under the covering of Pastor Tony Herndon Jr. He's a great man. <laughs> he is. And um, he, yeah, he's really helping me and training me in the gospel because I do have a desire to be a preacher. You know what I'm saying? I want to open I can my feel own that. church. I feel ministry. Yeah. I mean, this is ministry. I yeah. think that you're definitely helping someone yeah. and mm-hmm. someone out there is going to be able to say, hey, I can, I, this, I can overcome this thing. Mm-hmm. I can be delivered from mm-hmm. homosexuality. Um, I, I think you're doing a great job. Well, I think that God. you would definitely um, be a role model for someone out Amen. there. Um, you're tuning into Vessel Radio. We have a caller on the line. Caller, can you hear us? We have nonfiction on the line, okay. one of hey, Christ nonfiction. Music's very own. Nonfiction, are you with us? What's good? What's good? Oh, man. <laughs> What's up, Ed? What's up, Ed man? <laughs> <laughs> nonfiction. Hello. Good, man. How are you, sir? I just wanted to call in, man, just to just congratulate the young stunner, man, for all that he's trying to do and all the way that, the way that God is using him, man. You know, I, you, you inspire me too, bro. You know, I see your gift, and I see how awesome it is, man. And, you know, just keep pursuing whatever God put me in your heart to do, man, because you're going to light it up. Amen. Real, that's real talk. We're going to do it together, right? Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm with you all the way, you know. Amen. He's doing a great job on the picture. Amen. What's up, Mr. Hey, how are you? How are you? I'm enjoying this guy. He is lots of fun. Lots of fun. He's <laughs> yeah, a lot of fun, man. Yeah. I just wanted to call in, man, and just, you know, encourage you, brother, to keep on doing what it is you do. Awesome. All right. Love you, man. Awesome. Well, y'all too. We'll see you at church too. on Sunday. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. We're going to enjoy some more of your music from um, True Love, your mixtape, True mm-hmm. Love. What's coming up? What are we about to hear? Um, right now, we're about to hear Change, and this is like. A testimony. This is just like from where God brought me from, and it's just the testimony and song. All right, at Vessel Radio Change. on Instagram and Twitter. Change. We're here with Edward Bird.
come take me now Cause now I know I'm unsure how I feel about me But it's something in the way you love me It lets me know that I can't live without you Cause I'm not the same anymore Oh, I'm changed Well, yes, I do. Edward, we're definitely glad to have you on our broadcast on this evening. But my question to you is, a lot of people feel that homosexuality is actually genetic. Um, And other people obviously feel that it's spiritual. And that's what you touched upon earlier Mm -hmm. today. So my question to you is, do you feel that you no longer have homosexuality tendencies? Or is it that God has delivered you from having the same types of desires? Mm -hmm. That's a good question. <laughs> but no, um, I believe that God has delivered me from having the same type of desires. He's totally delivered me. He's changed my desires. But at the same time, the lot of the tendencies that I picked up really were learnt behavior from my parents, from my mother, you know what I'm saying, and my grandmother. So they were just things that I learned in life, you know what I'm saying? Like I, how I carry myself, sometimes the way I act, or you know what I'm saying, just from hanging around my mom and her girlfriends and being in the room, you know what I'm saying? Okay. How talking to them, and they're like, hey, girl, and I'm like, hey, you know right. what I mean? And so those things have, those things I just picked up growing up, you know what I'm saying? So God's totally changed my desire. I don't believe that it's genetic, not at all, because God didn't create us that way. Mm-hmm. That's not how he created us. God didn't create us in any kind of imperfection at all. So... I don't believe that, but I do believe that it is, you know, I do believe that, you know, the traits and stuff, that's God. He's changing those things. I mean, because where I am now, if you have pictures, it's pictures on my Instagram and my Facebook. If you, you can go on there and see what I used to look like and how I look like now, and how I act and how I talk now is totally different. Hmm. But that's God changing me and developing, and that's from me standing in his face like Moses was and how he transformed Moses. That's yeah. what I had to do, really get up in his face and really just seek him and ask him to change me and take away all the things that I didn't like. I, it's, it's so hard for me um, t- t- to receive that because I, I used to work in a medical field, and I've seen children burn, born with both sexes mm-hmm. where they may have been female organs on the inside and male on the outside, and the doctors had to pretty much make a decision to change this person and then you know um so i I, i'm on a you know borderline with Mm -hmm. that i believe that some people may there may be some genetics in it Mm -hmm. some people um and then i mean with you of course like you said it was a spiritual thing it was Mm -hmm. something that was spoken over you so that's that's really hard for me um shazan shazan well you know what i actually agree exactly with what you just said as well cassandra i do believe that it is both spiritual as well as there are you know, genetic involvements yeah. with it and, you know, chromosomes. I wasn't all that great in science, <laughs> uh, but I definitely understand genetics. Uh, but my question now to you, Edward, is what do you say to, you know, our children? Um, there are a lot of children that seem to be misguided. Yes. It seems to be the yes. new thing to be open about your sex and same sexes being okay, obviously, with same sex marriages. What do you say to our children um, who are dealing with homosexuality? And then the second part of that question is, what do you say to adults that are on the break of marrying the same sex? Mm. I mean, first of all, with kids, it's just, it's never easy. You know what I mean? It's never something that you can, I mean, they're, they're innocent. They don't know, you know what I'm saying? Like with kids, we, they're not really even making their own choices. They're just going by what they see. 
So they're falling into things that they don't even know. And so they just have to deal with the consequences of life because nobody ever taught them. You know what I mean? And so my heart goes out to them. I don't know if there's anything I could even say. You know what I mean? Anything I could even say, but choose Christ. You know what I'm saying? The only thing I can, it's not even much you can say. You just got to show them. You know what I'm saying? They need to see it. They need to know what it is. You know what I'm saying? So my heart actually goes out to any kid, anybody who is lost in the world. And that's like what the song Change was about when I said, you know what I'm saying, lost in the world. You yeah. know what I'm saying? My heart was yeah. open because I was lost in the world. My heart was open, so I was just receiving and going where it was going. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Without nobody teaching me what what to believe, what to stand on, who I am, and what to, what to allow and what not to allow. You know what I'm saying? They don't even teach kids standards anymore. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They just blatantly go ahead and pervert yourself and do whatever yeah. you want to do. Go have sex with this person. Go turn up. They like 11 years old. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I, I believe that we have to just teach our kids standards. We have to teach them what God says. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And we have to teach them the ways to go. Train up a child in the way they should go and they won't depart. That's what Amen. the word of God says. And that's yes. what we have to do. You know what I'm saying? And in situations like what you said where the kids are born in those kind of way and I wasn't even getting in that deep. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because, <laughs> see, that's the that's deep. You know what I'm saying? We have to really be guided by God yes. and what to say and where to go and how to treat that situation because only he knows because he created it. And it's something that he wants to do in it because every situation is for God to get the glory. It's nothing that comes in this world that we see that we can't face with God on our side. Mm, so even in those situations, God yeah. can handle it. And same-sex marriage? Same-sex marriage, yeah. I just, I, I stand against it. You know what I mean? Not in the sense of the person. I love you. You know, whoever you are and you're listening to me, I love you. God bless you. Come, we can talk about it and sit down and have a, a cup of coffee at Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, I drink tea. <laughs> we can talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm not, I don't believe that's the right choice for you. I know from personal experience and what I had to, what, what died in me to live that life. You know what I'm saying? What, what I had to totally, it was like, I had to totally like, it's like, eating out the trash can <laughs> right. you get what i'm saying it's yeah. like you know what i'm saying it's a it's a full it's a full god lays out a whole table right here but you so lost and confused that you say well this is my plate right here mm -hmm. that you think this is food you know yeah. what i'm saying that you think this is right but yeah. you're lowering yourself yeah. you know trash, what i'm saying eating trash. yeah so I'm, I'm looking forward to being able to have your mixtape and i'm yeah. sure everybody out there wants to um to know how to contact you and keep up with you so we can continue to support you oh, so well. please give everyone your information well um you can any inquiries and anything about booking and you know wanting to appear or anything like that you can contact my manager her name is monica stewart and you can contact her at edward lovebird at gmail.com that's e d w a r d L O V E B Y R D at gmail dot com. I know Facebook it's Facebook.com slash Ed Lovebird. Um SoundCloud is soundcloud.com slash Ed Lovebird. And on Instagram it's Edward Bird Music. Edward Bird Music. Mm -hmm. I mean this is this is fabulous. I I know Amen. that you have a, a calling and you you've Glory been delivered, God. but um what do you think is your purpose? What are you from here out, what is your mission? From here on, my mission is to spread the love of Christ. Like when I first got the call and the mission, when I, when I, God called me in, but he specifically gave me instruction. Mm. Wow. You know, when I, I it was funny because my aunt, I was in, and my family's like, spirit, I have like, my family's really spiritual. So my aunt, I went to her house and she was like, Ed, you need to go slow down. God mm -hmm. wants to give you instruction. Okay. And I said, okay. And so I went in my room and I just began to pray and just really seek God. And he told me, he said, tell my people that I love them. That's what he told me specifically. He said, tell my people that I love them. He even told me about the kids to come in our generation. He said that the kids to come in our generation, if you look at our children now, they're so strong. They're so bold. They say what they like three years old and they telling you, no, I don't want to do that. Right. <laughs> but they were born with that courage because of what we're going to have to face in the years and what's coming. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? God is a God. Wow. He sees everything. He knows everything. So he's not just thinking about right here at this moment. He's not right here at this moment doesn't even because he knows what's coming. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So he knows all that. And so he's built he, the kids that are coming to the world. They, they're ready to go to war. Yeah. And so that's why it's really important that we get the kids, get show them who God is, help them find their purpose and not try to make them anything, mm -hmm. but take what God has already placed inside of them and bring that out of them so they can grow and be who God's created them to be. Mm. Not what religions taught us, not what traditions taught us. You don't got to wear this on Sunday. You don't, right. none of that stuff. Right. You know what I'm saying? But who God put in you to be. Yeah. 
Amen. And that's what we have to instill into our kids. And that's what he showed me. And he said, just go and paint the world red. Just wow. tell everybody that I love them. Awesome. And so that's where this red and love and all this comes from because, you know, it's my mission in the name of Jesus. I am sitting here with a soldier in the army Praise for the Lord. Lord. Praise God. <laughs> Edward Bird with me tonight at Vessel Hello, Radio Bird. on Instagram and Twitter. We're going to take a quick t- commercial and we'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, once again to the Vessel Ministry Over Industry. We'd like to thank our sponsor for tonight's broadcast, Christ Music. And you can definitely find out more information about Christ Music by going to www.christmusic.net. We also welcome more sponsors. If you'd like to know more about advertising on this particular ministry, please feel free to send us an email to vesselradio at gmail.com. Or you can also reach us by phone at 276 316-3773. Once again, we'd like to thank tonight's sponsor, Christ Music. Uh, We're going to go ahead and continue with our broadcast. We have with us this evening Mr. Edward Bird, and I have one more question for you, Ed. That question is, we already understand the beginning portion of your life coming out of uh, homosexuality. Now, my question to you is, if life, your life, was a book and you were the author how would the final chapters of your life be written? That's good, and I'm so ready to answer that because I got it all wrapped out. <laughs> I'm going to be married. Okay. I'm going to have a son. My son's name is going to be Joshua Azariah Bird. He's going to be a great minister of the gospel. I'm going to adopt some kids to give them a fortunate life so that they can. Wow. I want to adopt children so that I can. I can teach them and give them the things that God showed me, you know what I'm saying? So they can be wise and so they can be strong and so they can go out in this world and do something and not be selfish or just crazy, but just living the life of Christ and love. I also want to, um, I want to start my own ministry, I eventually have my own church and it's going to be called Love Nation. So you can look out for that when it happens, um, with my brother Darren Carter. Amen. Um, and so um, that's what I really want to do. I just want to give back. I want to create places for, like, the homeless. I want to start this place called the Rebirth Center. I can't tell you all my stuff, but I want to do something good to Rebirth Center to give people, like, the homeless. I want to I want to help the world. That's what I want to do. I'm on a mission to really help the world, to see people saved, to see people delivered, to see people know that they don't have to live this life that the world is offering us. God has given us so much more life than that life abundantly. You know what I'm saying? Yes, and so yes, I want people yes. to feel that, to know that, to be empowered power and walk in that and to walk boldly in it and don't be you don't have to be timid and afraid but be confident and strong in who god's called you to be like that's what i really want people to know because even people they tell me you walk around like i'm invincible i heard somebody at my job just recently say i walk around like i'm invincible and i'm because it's not that i amen i know who i am i (laughs) know who god says i am and i ain't got to worry about nothing Yes. You know yes. So ain't so no devil in hell gonna tear me down. So your dad's not in your life still today? No, me and my dad, we're. It's when you don't have a relationship with somebody, and it's kind of you got to get back. You got to get into the habit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. My dad loves me. Amen. And I know that, you know what I'm okay. saying? And I love my father. You know what I'm saying? I love him. He's a pastor now. He's doing extremely good. He started his own ministry. Praise He's God. doing extremely good. His name's Edward Dyson. Amen. Praise That's my God. father. I love him. I love your dad if you're listening. <laughs> but he's doing really good. He's married. I have brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? They're beautiful. All my brothers and sisters sing. So who's your male role model now? 
since your father wasn't. Do you have one now? Um, I have somebody who like basically adopted me and pulled me in. His name is James Chapman. Okay. And it's actually um Darren Carter, his his grandfather. Okay. He I mean like he I will I would go when I was going to my grandma grandmother's house, he'd be walking out she he pull I he be like, Ed <laughs> stay focused. <laughs> God's got a mission for you. Amen. There's greatness all in you. <laughs> Stay focused. You know what I'm saying? He was one of those people to come and lay hands on. I impart power, holiness. You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's how he was. And he just really poured in me. He taught me how to be a man of my word. Wow. You know what I'm saying? He said, be a man of your word. Don't burn no bridges. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. You know, those type of things. So I thank God for him. Like, he really poured into me. And even my grandmother. Wow. Like, I had a lot of people pour into me. You know what I'm saying? Like, my grandmother, my grandfather's a bishop. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know how to deal with the homosexuality thing because it yeah. was something taboo. And, they, you know what I'm saying? They really didn't talk about it. I mean, it was happening, but so ain't nobody. that vessel. They just filled you yeah. up, and you overflow. Yeah, and I'm <laughs> overflowing. I'm ready to pop. That's why I can't stay on one topic because I just got so much in me. <laughs> Please, <laughs> please make sure and tell everyone again, nice and loud, how they can reach you once more. You can reach me on Facebook. Facebook. Facebook.com slash Ed Love Bird. That's E D L O V B Y R D. You can reach me on Instagram at Edward Bird Music. And you can reach me on SoundCloud at SoundCloud.com slash Ed Love Bird. And if you have any inquiries of booking, speaking engagements, singing engagements, worship, want to hear my music you can email me at edwardlovebird at gmail.com and awesome. contact my manager monica stewart awesome we have time for one time time for one more clip one more single and what's what's this we're about to hear okay now this song is turn up okay, turn <laughs> this up? song is turn up this song is called follow me so i mean you guys have seen how i fell in love with god and how he's changed me now i'm telling people to come with me on this journey okay come with me as i follow me as i follow christ jesus okay all right we're so let's turn up just turn up get your dancing shoes on day. yeah come on <laughs> yeah. Yeah. where my lovers at we in here L-O-V, Nation, it would be that team. L-O-V, Nation, it would be that team. L-O-V, Nation, yeah, we be that team. Going in hard, cause we're ripping the king. Swag so right, and yeah, we're shining so bright. Walk across the room, you see them flashing lights. And everybody talking about why he's so nice. I laid my life down, and I gave it to Christ. Now all across the world, they gon' know his name. Not in it for the money, we just in it to bring change. Follow me, I just wanna lead you to the light. Because it shines so bright. Come follow me. I just wanna lead you to the light. Because the life you like is right here with me. Hey, I know something, something, you know. I had a wonderful time with right. you. I, I always like to have fun with my guests. I had Amen. fun with you the whole time. Amen. But um, Amen let's see. Let me ask you a crazy question, okay? Um, if we were to look under Edward Bird's bed, oh God, what would be up under there? Clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, that's how you clean up. <laughs> yes. No, I don't put it underneath my bed, okay? I don't do that. Now, don't get that impression. But I love clothes. Like, wow. I am into fashion. I want to have my own oh, so fashion they line. Up under the bed. Nope. Oh, They're okay. not even under my bed. I'm just saying. Because <laughs> you can't even put enough under my bed because my bed is just on the floor. So you okay. can't even put enough okay. under my bed. But if you walk into my room, what you would see is clothes everywhere. I have so much clothes. Wow. Because I just love clothes. I okay, love clothes What you don't and wear, what you no. haven't worn within a year, you donate. And the other stuff, find a hanger. My brother just told me that I need to donate. <laughs> I am. I'm, I'm actually going through my clothes now, putting stuff in bags so I can give to people. Because okay. I do need to donate. <laughs> you do need to. I can help you with that. Amen. Donate. Glory to God. We're out here with Edward Bird. We had a great time. Love Nation. He is Amen. on a mission. You guys need to keep in touch with him. Check him out. And I'm so happy to hear. Will you please come back? Of course. Please come back with I us. I come co-host. How y'all doing? <laughs> Turn down for what? I'm going to have my good red hat on and maybe some red shoes. Praise God. For the blood of Jesus. Amen. Oh, that's right. Amen. We're here at Vessel Radio. Tune in next week, Tuesday at 7 p.m. at Vessel Radio. Remember, continue to be a vessel. Amen. Someone like Edward, right? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen.
But we definitely want to go ahead and thank you once again, Edward. We also can't forget about Sister Mary Sanctified, <laughs> who joined us earlier this evening. Uh, be sure to tune in with us each and every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Sharp. We can continue with this conversation about homosexuality, whether it is genetic or spiritual, and can God deliver someone from it? Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Vessel Radio. You can also email us, VesselRadio at gmail.com. And of course, feel free to send us your text messages or calls to 276-D1-Vessel. That is 276-318-3773. And lastly, while I'm standing here, we're approaching wedding season. If you're in need of a great DJ or a comedian, be sure to hit me up, Shazan. You can also hit up our Divine Diva of Comedy. Be sure to follow us on Facebook. You can definitely uh, give us a call also on the Vessel number. We'll be sure to be of service to you. God bless. Have a great week. See you next Tuesday. Mm -hmm.